before, but it wasn't with the whole faculty, and I want to do this exercise again since we have everybody, faculty and staff here. And we'll just do it real quick. I want us to, and we can just, as the girl said uh, in the back of the day, we can just popcorn out our answer in her life when she said that, and just popcorn out. Uh, we're going to talk about all the things, at, and I know y'all like my school here, because Clinton wasn't here yet, so I drew my own school. Uh, but uh, I want us to call out all the things that we have control over as a faculty and staff. Just name the things that we have control over. Ms. Ingram's going to uh, write them in the block here. Oh, in the school block. Right? <laughs> in the school block. <laughs> Your attitude. Attitude, all right. All right, anything else? Your commitment. Commitment. Dress code, <laughs> our dress code. How 
about respect, being respectful towards our students. Can you control that? How we speak to students, we control that. Is attitude up there? Attitude is up there, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know the right word for this, but how far you want to, you want to take the uh, children in your classroom? The achievement, right. student achievement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should have left a circle. I was trying to be cute and make it a student. <laughs> I make the school big enough. All right, now we're going to flip the script. And outside of the school building, parent involvement. Parent involvement. Okay, thank you. No, 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 that's inside the school building. Inside. Well, parent, wow. not involvement. Yeah. Parental contact. Yeah, parental contact. Yeah. 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 Well, we ain't outside. Oh, I'm sitting outside. Oh, you're sitting outside. I'm sitting outside. All right, now we're going to move to outside. 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 Parental involvement. I was going to say rain. Weather. Well, <laughs> air conditioning. Weather. Sorry, I'm not. Weather. Air conditioning. AC. AC. Lunch. What is it? Lunch. 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 Student enthusiasm. The views and opinions of others. The views and opinions of others. But shouldn't not anybody but Sir? Perception of the public, how they perceive the school. Public perception. Public opinion. Public opinion. Yes. Constitutional home life. <laughs> Students' home life. Somebody said something over here. What do you say? Where? <laughs> constitutional amendments. <laughs> constitutional amendments. <laughs> <laughs> you got one? Go on the boat. Next one. Finances. Finances. Yeah. All right. Anything else we do next? Y'all think about that we do not have control over. Sometimes student attitudes, I don't know how to say that. So a lot of times they come with the, the right. weekend baggage. Baggage. Student baggage. Thank you. Student attendance. Student attendance. <laughs> The state has changed it to six, or we as a school system has changed it to six. CCRPI. That has changed it to six. CCRPI? Yeah. Because the seniors keep asking me why was it them that have, that they only have six days to miss. Yeah, instead of ten. Some of them already Yeah, absolutely. Some of them already get their six. Yeah, that's way to be positive. <laughs> Anything else outside of school? Outside of school, we cannot control. Some of the things when y'all need a little huddle and some things come down, just think about those huddles y'all be having. Administrative workload. Administrative workload. That is, that's a big huddle right there. <laughs> Say something. We said student behavior. Student behavior. Well, they said baggage. I think the student lifestyle is up there. Student. Um, student work ethics. Work ethics.
we have no control over. All of these things that we have no control over. Then all of these things that we do have control over. When we start worrying about all of these things right here that we have no control over, that's when we start feeling overwhelmed and senses of, of uh, overwhelmness, anxiety, and all those other things, negativity, and all of this because we're worried about things that we cannot control. What we need to really worry about is the things that we can't control. We start worrying about the things we can't control and the things that we have control over that we can do something about, then that will decrease those levels of overwhelmness and anxiety. And there's another word I'm thinking about that I can't, uh, that I can't remember. But um, another thing we can't control that um, this ain't coming out. I won't mess up your beautiful hand, right? <laughs> One big thing that we cannot control is 180 days of school. We got 180 days of school that we have to cook, that we have to cram in all the things that the standards and everybody say that we have to do. We have to do it in 180 days with students. So just by the design of just by the design of our profession, just by the just by the design of our profession. We do not have enough time to do this stuff just by how our profession is designed. Now we have 100 and we have 190 days as as teachers, but with students is 180 days. So just by the way our profession is designed, we don't have time is always an issue. So that means if we try to do it within the 745 to 345 time frame, it ain't going to happen. But when we choose this profession, we already know by design. Everybody else that works, you know, in the, in the regular working world, they have just depends on what kind of job they do and not count weekends. But, you know, I don't know the math, but it's more than 180 days. Just by design of what we do, time is already built in as a, as a, as a constraint. But again, we, if we worry about this stuff right here moving forward, and this is where our focus is going to be moving forward, then we're not going to stay in this profession that long. Or it's not going to, it's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be an issue. So what I'm saying, moving out of the first nine weeks into the second nine weeks, let's try to change our focus and let's be concerned about the things that we can do. And I guarantee you that some of these things that we can do will help on these things that we cannot control. For an example, if we talk to the students with respect and in a way that we want people to talk to our family members, and I guarantee you, it's going to have a, an effect on student behavior. Because I guarantee you, in this, right in this room, we got some, some kids, and this is nothing new, that cut up in a, one teacher's class and in a perfect angel in another teacher's class. And the common denominator in that class is the adult in the classroom. And the trust that they built uh, with that student. And I'm going to give you an example. We've got how many resource classes we got? One, two, three, four. We got four resource classes. And in each four resource classes, we've got some students that in those resource classes last year were one day, Tuesday night, students kicked out of school. And these students right now, because of the adults that's in those classrooms, and the way they're encouraging those kids, and the way they're talking to those students, and the way that they're giving those students a sense of achievement, all of those kids, I can name names, and you can do the research, all those kids are still in this building. And they come to school almost daily, and they're working. Where last year, Coach, he was with them on Tuesday night, and I think you did some home stuff, and you was with some of these very students 
that's in these resource classrooms. And oh, by the way, y'all, they're being successful. And what's the difference? It's the adult that's in that classroom. So that alone, just that, affect that right there. We can do things in our class that can affect that. We have nothing to do with the life of, we, we, can't, we can't do anything with the home life of our students. I told y'all we had a, 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 a little girl who's in the ninth grade that was living in um, Villa South. And we had a little boy the other day who the teacher took time to uh, ask him what was going on. And what was going on, he just was in an argument with his mother because his mother wouldn't bring him to school. Now, he missed the bus because they got up late, but the mother wouldn't bring him to school, so then that caused an argument which threw his whole day off. So we have situations like that, that kids, and y'all know, I don't have to sit and stand here and name the baggage that some of these kids have. You want, you want my phone to ring off the hook? Let them don't eat lunch. Or let them don't eat breakfast. Now they won't call me because you know we always got to make them come in here when we talk about academics. But you let them run out of breakfast, or we don't, or we don't make provisions for them to eat lunch. And my phone's gonna ring off the hook as to why my child didn't eat lunch. True story. I had a little girl. We were we were um, holding the lunch. And I went up there, and she said, well, I'm not going to eat. And I said, no, I said, stand here, you can eat. I said, we'll give you a pass to class. They're going to have the chicken fingers ready in a few minutes. You'll be able to eat. No, no, I'm all right. I said, are you sure? Yeah, I'm all right. I said, OK. So she went to class. My phone rang. It was her mother. Uh, I understand y'all ran out of lunch while my daughter didn't eat lunch. I said, no, ma'am. I said, I talked to your daughter myself, and she chose not to eat, and I all probably begged her to eat. Because they count on that meal as part of their daily diet. That's something that we cannot control. Now, we can have a great attitude, because I'm going to tell you, if a student comes to me and they say they're hungry, we know how much they must be hungry, because it takes a lot for somebody to walk, for a child to walk up to you and say, I missed breakfast, and I'm hungry. And we can handle that one or two ways. We say, come on, babe, I'm going to make sure you get some breakfast. Or we say, get over there and, get over there and sit down. You should have been here when breakfast time was here, and you don't do nothing but talk in the hallways when you was playing around outside. Where, and, then, and then guess, oh, by the way, when that student leaves your class, now, every teacher out there got to catch the rap of that student. And all we had to do was walk, tell them to go to the office, get a pass, and go get them a bowl of cereal. So, teacher attitudes and teachers' relationship with kids can have a positive effect on some of that stuff. How we communicate with them. Y'all know that's a pet peeve of mine. Because these kids, their home life, who was that that told me they called, uh, the little girl's mother over some work, and the mother about cussed the girl out on the phone. Who's that had that conversation? It was you. Tell us, you don't have to mention the girl's name, but just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the young lady didn't want to be pulled out, and called mom, and she was on the phone. I was on the phone with mom while she was talking to the young lady dropping F bombs. And just, I, after that, I felt, I, mean, I ain't calling home no more, but you know, you told me I need to keep calling, which Fine, but the little girl came back the next day and she and I had a conversation and said she's on the up and up now. Yeah, but and the, and the reason I the reason I tell you because sometimes for these kids this is the only place <coughs> this is the only place of reassurance. The only reassurance they get is from us. So if they get fussed at and yelled at at home, then they come here and do. So again, the things that we can control will affect student enthusiasm. We have things in place that we make them get involved, whether they want to or not, with our engagements. We do a lot of, we do a lot of uh, 
parent calls. We get involved by following our six-step plan and trying to make contact. Sometimes the phones are disconnected, but we documented that at least we tried to make contact. So I guess what I'm saying is moving forward into the next nine weeks, let's put more of our focus here. And some of this stuff that if we do well here will have a positive effect on things out here, especially when it uh, comes to our students, and especially when it comes to things like our CCRPI and things of that nature. We need to understand just by the nature of what we do, time is going to be time is going to be an issue. Now we try to to fit extra time in wherever we can. You know, example in the morning. Some of y'all do a fantastic job of, of uh, tutoring, but at least it gives us the option. Make sure I'm not running over. Okay. So I just wanted to have this conversation with the whole faculty and staff. Um, and just, you know, if, if you don't, and we all have bad days, we all have things that happen that's beyond our control. But again, we need to leave that outside the school building. We dealing with one another. We need to always do it again in a professional manner. And then we're dealing with students. My motto is that I don't treat anybody student like I wouldn't want somebody to treat mine. And long as I do that, then I don't ever make a mistake in the way I communicate with kids. Because I certainly wouldn't want somebody, when my children was here in this high school and I got one at the middle school, and I don't want nobody talking down to her or disrespecting her or telling her what she can and cannot do and not encouraging her to do better. You know, I don't want nobody doing that to my child. And all of us in here, whether we have children or family members or nieces or nephews, if you're true to yourself, you don't want anybody doing that to them either. And I had this conversation a little earlier, and the thing that I cannot understand is how we can disconnect the two. How some of us, are we can disconnect the two. That we'll quickly say something to somebody else's child that we know good well. We wouldn't tolerate them saying it to ours. So I think if we all kind of keep that in mind, I think when I'm dealing with students, we'll get better. Now, do they upset us? Absolutely. Do my own children upset me? Absolutely. But when they upset me, I don't go into, you ain't going to be nothing. You ain't going to amount to nothing. You going to be like your uncle or your cousin, so-and-so that's locked up in wherever and wherever. I don't go into that. I redirect, and I instruct, and I offer discipline, and all of those things. And then I get them back on track. And that's what we have to do for everybody else's child and walk in this building. Is this demographic difficult? Yes, it is. But guess what? The whole demographic is not difficult. And the difficult ones is a small percentage But where we make our mistake is we turn our minority into our majority. And that's where we make our mistake. And we start looking at all of our students. And one thing that's a fact is how you see them is how you go going to treat them. That's a fact. How you look at a person, whether it's a child, whether it's an adult, how you look at them is how you're going to treat them and what you think about them. So if you don't think they can achieve, guess what? They ain't going to achieve. But guess what? They're achieving in somebody else's class. <coughs> I didn't even mean to get up here and say all of that. <laughs> you know, sometimes the Lord will say, you open your mouth and he'll feel it. And I think that's what's happening right now. I got a script right here and I ain't saying nothing on this script. But I just want us to move forward the next nine weeks positively, with a positive mind. Because this is a critical profession. This profession changed lives, as you know. 
And what we say, I, I give example after example after example to how we said something to a child. We had a young man a couple of years ago who grandfather gave him a truck. And this is true stuff. Grandfather gave him a truck. He was in Mr. Ferris's class. And they were talking about something to do with that truck. And Mr. Ferris encouraged him to start his own business. I was his first customer in his trash business. All from a conversation he had with one of y'all. I don't know if he still got that business, and I ain't seen him in a while. But I was his first customer. <laughs> and he took that grant, the truck the grandfather gave him and turned it into a business. And that's the kind of power we have, y'all. That's the kind of power we have. And also the kind of power we have is when we say something negative, then go out here and jump off a building or do something to themselves. So I'm going to save my script <laughs> for when we come back. But I just wanted to encourage y'all. And I just wanted to, to know that this is a noble profession. And this is a calling, y'all. Everybody can't do this. Ain't everybody just <laughs> Everybody can't do this. This is a noble profession. This, this profession changed lives. I don't care if it's on the stage. I don't care if it's in the chorus. I don't care if it's on the football field. I don't care if it's in the classroom. I don't care if it's in construction, fallout, out, CTAE, or up here in that discipline office or sitting out there on that red bench. Anytime we have contact with students, we need to make it the best contact that we have, that we have in us, because it has the potential to be a life-changing contact for the positive or the negative, and hopefully we're doing it for the positive. So let's keep encouraging them. And my time is up. Y'all have a safe weekend, and uh, we'll see.